Hi, my name is Mark Stipik. I'm the work cover guy. Today I'm answering the question, when should you consider engaging surveillance on an injured worker who has a work cover claim? The short answer to that question is as infrequently as possible. Surveillance has terrible track record for getting actual outcomes on work cover claims, whether it be return to work outcomes or whether it be sort of technical outcomes like getting a person's payments cut off. Even when it comes to proving fraud, the, the stats are just terrible when it comes to a correlation between getting surveillance and achieving the, some sort of outcome on a work cover claim. I meet a lot of employers who are enthusiastic about getting surveillance, but I need to take that, those employers through a conversation as to why do you really want it and what is it actually going to result in. The reality is when you do get surveillance involved, there are a lot of risks that come along with it. It really can shatter any trust, any, any remote trust that might have been left between the parties at that stage. If surveillance is engaged and the surveillance agent is spotted, then you know, any hope of gaining that worker's trust and you know, potentially your credibility goes out the window at that stage. So there's a lot of negative consequences that, that come along with it. And when it comes to the potential outcomes of, uh, of surveillance, well, you might catch a person who's working. They might be declaring that they're not working. But let's say, for example, you do catch them uh, you know, doing a cash-in-hand job. The counter argument to that would be, oh yeah, you know what, I did work that day. Um, I'll declare my wages for those that that day, and and that's it. And you know, th there's an argument that you know we don't know that this person's working every day. We do know that they were working that particular day, and you know, it, it may not be that complicated for the person to say, well, okay, here's what my wages were for that day, and adjust my work cover entitlements accordingly. Uh, and another outcome that that you might hope to gain from surveillance is the person just demonstrating that they've got more of a capacity than they're leading people to believe. It's a difficult case to argue as well because uh, I know from, from you know close friends of mine who have been injured that you do have good days and bad days and it might be that a surveillance agent will catch an injured worker doing some sort of activity that demonstrates some sort of capacity at work, capacity for work, but that same person then might say, well, yeah, I could do that activity, but you know what? I was paying for it for the rest of the day. And if I could, could rewind the clock, I wish I could go back and not do that because my shoulder was buggered for the rest of the day. And you probably didn't catch that on film. Uh, and, and the same argument goes for having good days and bad days. You know, people do have days where, yes, okay, this is a day where I can actually get up and go out, to the, out of the house. So I'm going to go get my shopping done today. But the surveillance doesn't necessarily catch that the other six days of that week that person was in terrible shape. So this is just where surveillance sort of fits in, in, the, in the big picture. So I'm not a huge fan of surveillance. I really find that there are much better ways and more positive ways of achieving return to work outcomes. If you're going to get surveillance at all for whatever your reasons are, I would only really recommend getting the surveillance in close proximity to an independent medical examination. The, the only instances where I really see that there, there sometimes is some value to it is if uh, an injured worker attends an independent medical examination and they speak with the doctor about what their capacity is. The insurer can potentially then, after they've done, gone through the examination, provide the surveillance to the examining doctor who can then weigh up between what the person said and what has been demonstrated here on the video and that might help them form a more clear uh, opinion on the on the injured worker's capacity. That's really about the only scenario that I, I think there, there can be some value in surveillance, but really I see it as a last resort and I do feel that the potential negatives outweigh the positives. So have a good hard think about it. That's my thoughts on surveillance. I hope this video has been helpful for you.